So education and awareness. Isn't there a lot to be said about education and awareness? This is one of those dreadful slides that you get when you go to a conference. And then you look and you see, oh, am I made to sit here and read all of this? No. You don't have to sit here and read all of this. But if it wasn't for my amazing, amazing team, Amy, Wes, Joe, Charles, Shane, Seth, AJ, all the people that come and go and help us with this and help us with that, we wouldn't be able to have done such a good job with education and awareness. And one of the, the one company in South Africa where from the very first day on a pavement in Cape Town, I can't remember when it was, Trenton, years ago, I've said, I believe in that man. Because education, awareness, yash, or stigma, yash, or whatever, but actual education. You're not a duck a private club if you don't send your bud tender on a training workshop so they need to know what to say. So to give us a few words, the man whose mission I believe in with his amazing team of his wife, Bianca, and Linda who can't be with us, and the awesome Chiba crew who hosted us here today, Trenton's going to give us a few words on the importance of education and training. <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks for organizing this and for all the other people that have been involved. I think uh, what's super important at the moment is that as an industry, we need to pull our socks up, we need to grow up, we need to get organized. So this is a good step towards that. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a common theme with the speakers about you know, polarization, people not working together. Uh, often uh, I'm overseas on conferences and I describe South Africa at the moment as the snake eating its own tail, not just in cannabis, you know, generally. And I do feel quite positive after the elections that we have entered a new era but it's going to take a seismic mindset change and a lot of energy to push forward to undo all of this drama cycle that we've been living in. And we have a drama cycle in the cannabis industry. And part of doing, uh, uh, evolving and, and moving this industry forward is to work together and to unify. We are not enemies of each other. The enemies of our cannabis industry for me are the international market. Those are the people that we need to be targeting in terms of getting as much cannabis into Europe and other places in the world as possible and, and, and building our industry from the ground up. So training is obviously a fundamental part of that. I was at a cannabis club in inverted commas um, in Cape Town recently and I, I, I ordered some, some cannabis and this girl took the jar out and she stuck her hand straight into this thing and pulled out a whole bunch like this and I almost fell off my chair. I was like, what are you doing? Where are your tongs? Where are your gloves? And I realized just how completely ridiculous it is if you if you look at it uh, from a, from a, from a macro level okay you have this multi billion dollar industry globally which is just growing and then you have the, the the dispensaries in different countries and our clubs and the intersection between this huge massive industry and the general public is the bud tender or the cannabis consultant they're on minimum wage, 8 to 10K. They've got no qualifications. And these are the people that are supposed to be intersecting, educating, teaching people about the plant. So we've really failed in that sense at the moment. And I know there are a lot of clubs. Uh, the course that we have for bud tanning is actually licensed from the States. It's accredited in seven different US states. So it has a lot of weight behind it. Uh, there are a lot of clubs that are starting to realize how important it is to train the bud tenders. And it's not just bud tenders, it's cultivators. You know, I went to seven farms from the 20 million to a 280 million rand farm eight, nine weeks ago. There was not a single one of those farms I could touch and help with product for the international market because they're not dialed in because the guys are not training. You know, we had a, a situation a few days ago where the agri seater have opened up a, a grant funding window, the agri seater okay? And on their uh, category list of, of relevant topics were coconuts, dates, cacao, pigs, whatever else. There was not a single mention of hemp or cannabis. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's completely unacceptable, okay? We recently, um, two weeks ago, finally, after three and a half years, got a, a, an okay in the next step of our accreditation for higher education okay after three and a half years we still have a few hoops to jump through but it's been recommended for accreditation how can it take three and a half years 
for a one-year course to be accredited in this country. So from an education perspective, I'm quite militant about education in the sense that I think it's a complete disaster. Okay, we have mechanization and AI banging down our doors. You know, for those of you who are aware of what's happening in that macro environment, things are terrifying. Okay, exhilarating in many ways, but terrifying, especially for developing economies. So from an education perspective, we are trying to drive a different way of approach to education. It's not just about monkey see, monkey do, teaching the same thing to everybody. It's about teaching critical thinking, lifelong learning, uh, how to connect the head and the heart. So we actually change the way we educate. We're still educating the way we were <laughs> after the Industrial Revolution. So our education bodies in this country need to pull their socks up. And we are certainly you know, battling our way to get to a point where we can standardize education. But it's important that that happens across the whole industry. So I want to thank you all for being here. We are trying to provide services into the uh, Cannabis Club space from, from software to mobile testing uh, because we need to up our game. So it's all good and well for us to stand and complain about government, which we all do all the time. But what we need to do is self-reflect on ourselves and go, what can I do to build this industry into one of the biggest industries in the world? And we have that potential, but not without working together, not without pulling our socks up and not without growing up as an industry. Okay. That's what I'd say.